So in yesterday's news video, I shared the story of that couple that, uh, that hung over the bridge for over an hour in Idaho, over a canyon, 80 feet above solid rock, held only by the safety chains connected to their trailer. Their trailer was on the bridge, their truck was hanging over the bridge, and their safety chains were the only thing that was keeping them from falling. And since I shared that story, I've gotten a lot of questions from concerned people about trailer sway and how they can avoid, you know, such a situation like that. Because it's really scary, right? I mean, hanging off a bridge. And worse things certainly have happened due to trailer sway. Definitely lots of people have died. So a lot of people are concerned about trailer sway and how to avoid it and you know, they don't own RVs yet, or is this something that, you know, is going to scare them off from, from RVing? So, and I, I certainly get it, you know, but I'll say this, I didn't get it until recently. So let me take you back a little bit. I've been towing trailers since I was 14 years old. Used to be in Illinois, you could get your learner's permit at the age of 14. My mom taught me to drive. Her job at the time... Uh, she was an independent businesswoman uh, running a, a business that had her going to these uh, different dance competitions across the country. And she had a trailer full of her wares that she and I would drive around uh, and, and show. And I would, I would drive that trailer hundreds and hundreds of miles at age 14. I don't think that's something you'll see today. But um, as long as I had a parent in the, in the front seat with me, I was legally allowed to do that. So I've been towing for a very long time, and I've been RVing for about five years now. But I'm by no means an expert in towing. Lots of people tow, you know, hundreds and hundreds of miles a day, five days a week, if not more. But trailer sway is something I had never, ever experienced. Not a lick of trailer sway until very recently. So if you've been following our channel, you know we bought a new truck about a month ago. And prior to that, uh, we had the same trailer, same exact setup, same exact weight distribution hitch, but with a different truck, a three quarter ton truck, a Ram, a 2014 Ram. Now uh, we have this new F350, so it's a one ton truck, and uh, it's the Tremor edition, so it's the off-road package. And since we purchased this, we've been dealing with sway issues with our trailer and working through solving them. And, and we have solved them at this point. That's not, that's neither here nor there. Um, my point about that is that a lot of you may have never experienced sway. So you might be giving people advice on this and you might have heard things that help solve sway. But what you might not know is that it could be a dozen different things. You might be telling people, well, you need to load all the weight towards the front of your trailer. That can be super helpful advice, but it's only practical to a certain extent in an RV, right? You only have so much room where you can move stuff around to. It's not like you can pile all your belongings in the very front of your RV, nor should you. Having all the weight forward of the axles is not the greatest idea either. But what I've learned is that it can be the tires on your truck. It can be the tires on your trailer. It can be the alignment on either of those two things. It can be the air pressure on either of those two things, too high or too low. And a properly set up weight distribution hitch can certainly mostly alleviate the problem, but that's, they have to be set up so exact sometimes depending on the hitch technology and i won't pretend to know about all the different weight distribution hitches out there we have an e2 hitch and i will say when we first set it up and i thought set it up correctly with this truck uh it killed all the sway but it was destroying our ride because what a weight distribution hitch does is it forces weight towards the front axle of your truck and by doing that our truck felt like it was going through an earthquake going down a road with any roughness in it at all uh, to the point where it would seemed it was very dangerous on that end made some adjustments to the hitch and and uh sort of solved the problem 
And also our truck has a anti-sway system built in, electronic anti-sway, and our previous truck didn't. And what that system does is it can apply braking forces to, to the wheels in different configurations when it senses sway. And really the lightning moment for us was turning that system off. It solved a ton of our problems. Know that there are lots of solutions to this problem and lots of different combinations to solutions to this problem. Now, this couple was driving over a canyon and they experienced a 35 mile an hour, that's a guesstimate, wind gust. That's what the, the weather was saying was happening that day. So a lot of people are, are, are saying, well, I've driven through that lots of times. How was their sway so bad? Do they not have a weight distribution hitch? What caused them to sway so bad so quickly that they went over the edge of this bridge over a canyon? This is such a unique spot. When you go over something like this, that wind is going to surprise you. They were probably experiencing no wind. And then the second they get on that bridge, boom. When that wind hits the side of a trailer, that trailer starts moving and it moves the truck. And if you have a weight distribution hitch that uh, of most weight distribution hitch technologies, that's going to stop your sway or slow your sway or minimize your sway. It's not always going to get rid of it altogether. They said they, they knew about the dangers of this bridge and, and the wind conditions. And the bridge is only so wide. And, you know, there's a guardrail right there. And it, it only takes a little imagination to see how a little bit of uncontrolled sway could cause a major problem on such a skinny bridge in, in such a situation like that. So how do you solve sway? By from my experience now by piece by piece going through all the different things it can be and taking them one by one you can't just throw everything out at it once and you can't just do nothing now why is sway a problem with travel trailers and it's not with fifth wheels and it's generally not you can get sway with the fifth wheel but generally this is something confined to travel trailers is because if you look at the different axles of a truck and, and then your trailer as well, those are, those are points that can wiggle, right? So you've got the rear end of your truck. Imagine you get hit by a big wind gust without a trailer attached. Your truck can, can wiggle because there's so much air hitting the side of your truck. Your trailer, same thing except magnified much larger because it's a big giant box. So it's taking that wind to the side of it like a kite. And we've you've got these points, the different axles that can that can wiggle. They're they're not, they're both they're pivot points. So the trailer it's a pivot point. Your whole trailer can move. So you've got your rear axle of your truck and you've got the axle of your trailer and they can both wiggle. On a fifth wheel, that's all you got because the fifth wheel hitch is right over this axle in the bed of your truck. On a travel trailer, the hitch is in the middle. So now you've got these two wiggle points with a hinge between them. And that's where the, that's where the issues really happen. That trailer, once it moves, it's pushing. It's when, when this trailer is moving this way, it's pushing the truck this way as well. When it moves that way, it's pushing the truck that way. And it just doesn't work the same way in a fifth wheel. So fifth wheels are inherently safer when it comes to sway. At some point, a regular travel trailer, once it grows to a certain size, it's dangerous. And, you know, we like to talk about safety when it comes to towing or safety when it comes to anything in terms of absolutes. And safety isn't about absolutes at all. It's about mitigating risks. When people say, I turn my propane on when I go down the road to run my refrigerator, I've never had a problem with it. And other people say, well, you need to turn it off for safety's sake. You could, you could have an issue. Um, if you got into a crash, you could have an explosion. Both of those people are right. And nobody knows the answer. Safety is a, a, a measurement of, of risk and nobody has measured that risk to know what could happen because honestly, not much has happened, but there, 
there are possible dangers of leaving your propane on. How dangerous are they? I don't know, and nobody can answer that question for you. And that's why no manufacturer is ever gonna say, yes, you should run with your propane on. That's safety. So when we're talking about travel trailers, there's a lot of different situations, a lot of different trucks. Uh, certainly if you're towing with a half ton, that's quite different than, than towing with a heavy duty truck, a three quarter ton or a one ton truck. Uh, but my eyes were open big time, jumping up from a three quarter ton to a one ton, to a bigger engine, to a newer truck with electronic sway control caused me problems. And that can happen to anybody. So what am I getting at here? Take it seriously and think about when you're buying an RV, the type of technology you use. I think weight distribution hitches are essential for towing a travel trailer, you know, over a, a given weight. And I'm not gonna tell you what that weight is because I don't know, it depends on your truck. But it cannot hurt to have a weight distribution hitch unless it's not set up properly. And if they're the bar type or the Anderson type or the Hensley type, they provide friction that stops sway. They apply thousands of pounds of friction that stops sway. You can not use one and get one of those anti-sway bars, which provide like 50 pounds or 100 pounds worth of friction. They'll help, but they're not going to solve the problem. Weight distribution hitches are just such a better way to tow. But what's even better is a fifth wheel. So if you're trying to make those decisions about a fifth wheel and you're thinking, and look, look, I don't own a fifth wheel, but I'm getting one. And you're thinking about the stuff in your, the bed of your truck. I don't want to lose that room. Uh, or you're thinking about the height of the fifth wheel. You're thinking about the cost of a fifth wheel. A lot of fifth wheels are more expensive. If you're going to tow a lot, if you're going to tow through a lot of windy conditions, that sort of stuff, I think it's really, really useful to think about getting a fifth wheel in order to solve the sway problem. Now, I know some people are watching and they're going to say, just like I would have a month ago, well, I've never had a sway problem. It's fine. Yeah, but how do you know? How do you know? I don't know. Anyway, uh, just some thoughts on, on how that could happen to anybody. This is a couple that was full-time RVers that had at least some experience towing. They're in their 60s uh, and hung over a bridge because of a 35-mile wind gust, but which is not enough of a wind gust that I think would stop most of us from traveling that day. Things like that can happen anywhere and they can happen in fifth wheel. I've seen plenty of fifth wheels tipped over on the internets. But towing, we all need to spend a little bit more time taking seriously because it could be your life. It could be someone else's life. My point in doing this video in the first place was to maybe comfort people by saying this was this is a rare incident and that's true but now as i'm sitting here i don't want to i don't want to comfort anybody i want to make you uncomfortable i used to spend a lot of time uh i worked in the theater industry and i would uh i was a lighting designer and a technician and uh eventually you know lots of other things but early on in my career i would hang lights and i would be in these big theaters 40 feet in the air walking on two inch pipes hauling hauling 40 pound lights up ropes while standing on these pipes and then hanging them with two hands and a wrench and back then we would do that entirely without safety harnesses without hard hats any of that sort of stuff that they're all using today for the most part and i mean i'm talking like the year 2000 and three, right? This is not ancient history. And I felt a little nervous about that stuff, but I only made mistakes when I felt completely safe. I don't think when you're towing, you should ever feel completely safe because that's when you drop your guard. That's when you stop thinking of eventualities. That's when you take your eyes off the road. That's when that's when you don't pay attention to something that is going to cause a problem. That's when you come up to that bridge and you don't think, 
maybe there could be some heavy wind gusts over this bridge. Maybe I should slow down. That's it, guys. Just thought I'd share that. See you next time.